So I just want to start this off with this in mind, that Andrew Schulz is a comedian and everyone with him in Akash and everybody, they're comedians and they have a comedic show called Flagrant. And then this is where you said we want vengeance. Okay, here we go. Here we go. This, 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 uh, I have a w. Yes, I want to see this. This is the highlight of my career. <laughs> okay, this is how you guys get Wait. quality in life. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Oh, yeah. oh. And the thing they constantly do on this show is like bubble pop, but they do it in a way that's so funny that I think it goes over people's heads, but they really are saying something kind of profound. And I think comedians often do that is they find that nuance between like silliness and, and profound. Tim Dillon was just on Diary of CEO, like I said earlier, and he even said the job of a comedian is to make you laugh, whether it's factual or not. But also I think in conjunction with that, sort of maybe the Dave Chappelle or other people, they do also try to make you think whether or not you agree with their opinions. They are in some ways kind of trying to make you laugh by also observing the absurd. You know what I mean? Kind of like Carlin. The boys do this in the very start of the show for flagrant. And I was just kind of laughing that they can say these things out loud. They can say like adults know better, but then adults still throw tantrums like three-year-olds. That's what I'm fascinated by. How does the adult world know better, but we can't pop the bubble, so we throw a tantrum instead. Check it out. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Flagrant. Have Happy Trans Visibility Day. Happy Trans Visibility Day. Let's go. Yes. That's big. That's big. Akash didn't know what Trans Visibility Day was. I did not. So basically what happened was the world, and by the world, I mean right wing Twitter and Instagram was absolutely furious that Trans Visibility Day was made the uh -huh. same day as Easter. You did see this a little no, bit. No, right? I just put it together. Okay. So <laughs> Easter and Trans Visibility Day was made the same day. And you know who made it the same day? According to right wing Twitter, Twitter and Who? Instagram? Who? Well, Joe Biden oh. made it. He probably forgot. He, he declared it. He might have <laughs> forgotten. Or, Mark, what, what might else be true? I saw this and I was like, this is crazy. Like, why is Biden trying to piss off everybody? Because like, when you see it on the surface, the there's like, there's no way that this is actually possible because there are a team of people that are there to make sure things like this do not happen. It just seems unrealistic because this is an election cycle. Yeah, you'd be I'm on top of that. I'm not saying that Biden is going to win the religious right, mm -hmm. but you don't want to irritate them. You don't want to lose them. Exactly, sure push them, them in yeah, Donald yeah, Trump's yeah. direction, right? Yeah. So we're like, there's no- f Like Hillary Clinton did, calling people, what did she call them, deplorables? Remember that? Was that deplorables? Was that the word she used? This is so interesting. Already, listen, it's like he knows we are in an election season. It's, it's up babe, it's here, let's go. So why would this happen? Why would Easter Sunday also be Trans Visibility Day? And why would the conservatives come up with a conspiracy theory that they're shoving the trans down our throats? So interesting on a day that, by the way, Easter Sunday, even the religious people will be like, they secularized our very important holiday. Do you hear yourselves? You're lucky the White House even acknowledges Easter. We could get rid of Easter altogether. Like that's what's even more ironic is like, we could we could just get rid of Easter altogether. It's a religious holiday. Or we can allow it to, allow it to be commercialized and then allow it to be part of the whole culture. But realistically, it's like your dude died and he rose from the dead and that's great. We love that. You know, all hail Jesus, all that. We love that. But also it's kind of ironic that they think like we own this day. But let's see, let's let, listen to them more because it's even funnier. It's even funnier. Way that this is true, but everybody is posting and every headline is Joe Biden declares Easter Sunday trans visibility. By the way, I'm not on this part of Twitter, so I didn't see any of this. So I only know it happened because I watch Flagrant. I did not see this part of Twitter. I'm not on this part of Twitter. I don't follow conservatives. I try to block them. They're so frustrating. Even though a lot of my family, much like Schultz, they are conservative, they are Catholic, they are sort of Trump voters. I don't pay attention because I think conservative talking heads are just usually kind of grifty because they usually spread a lot of misinformation. But I mean, not that the progressives are any better, but you know what I mean? They are 5% better. Day. Which isn't technically wrong, but but it seems like a little misleading because no. the first Trans Visibility Day was founded in 2009. That's oh, what how I'm many years thinking. ago is that? This was uh, 15 years That's 15 years. So the first Trans yeah. Visibility Day is founded 15 years ago, right? Now, okay. okay. Now, what is something very unique about Easter? The day Jesus is risen, right? That is actually, yo. Well, I that is fire that, that you know. I'll that. fuck with you for that, bro. You know what I mean? That is actually why. Christ is king. Next don't question. let nobody tell Next you different. Christ. So he's memeing Christ is king because that's what Candace said. And that's, I guess, a dog whistle for allegedly anti-Jewish stuff. But also Christ is king is something that people have been saying for way longer than it was a dog whistle. So now I'm very confused about how culture has shifted. But Andrew's going to keep saying that to meme on 
Candace Owens, but like in Ben Shapiro. So just like keep that in mind. Racist motherfucking king. You hate that. Listen. And they acknowledge it's the dog whistle, you know, as a, you know. Christ is king, dog. <laughs> Get the camera on dog. Shifty, do something. <laughs> Christ is king and re- let him know. <laughs> Christ is king. Happy yeah. Trans Visibility Day. You got to get fired so, from Daily Wire, bro. You gotta we're drop. fucking yeah. ready to That was a good response. You're <laughs> charged up. You're being anti Semitic right now, dude. Okay, listen. Okay. <laughs> now, Easter. It's Beza says, what's the dog whistle about? It's a dog whistle for like anti-Jews because it's Jesus Christ is king and Jews don't believe Christ is king. Right? I think that's what it is. I feel dumb because like I don't follow these bubbles. But apparently that's what the whistle is about. It's like it's anti-Jewish because Jews don't believe Jesus was God. So Christ is king is like basically saying like you're anti-Jews. Because it's on a Sunday. Correct. The date... Changes, changes every ah, single year. Yeah. Do you think it's possible when they, I mean, this is how brilliant and shrewd <laughs> the left is. This is how genius they are at True. tearing apart the nuclear family and destroying the great Christian t- traditions of this country. 15 years ago, they plotted the course <laughs> of Easter's and they were like, one Easter, when a Democrat is in office, there is going to be a trans visibility day and an Easter Sunday that lie on the same day. And Joseph Biden is going to be forced to declare a trans visibility day over Easter. Do you think that that's the yeah, case? That's, that's, so funny. Funny. that's definitely what yeah, it was, right? Yeah. Well, they also, uh, doesn't the calendar repeat every seven years? Yeah, that's our six, I guess, because a leap year. Oh, wait, is that true? I would assume six, just because oh, you skip a day. I would assume you're fucking good, bro. Four, right? I would this assume. guy's fucking good. Well, there's That's seven crazy. days in a week, but you skip one day because of leap years. So I would assume it's six. So they but did, maybe it's seven. They I did know. it 2015 and this year also, I guess. And nobody said shit back then, did they? Because then you kind of knew who was coming. Well, they knew the minute. hero was coming to save the day in a year. <laughs> well, well, who was president at the time? That's what, Maybe we should look into that. It was Barack's, but 2016 Trump. So 2015, you said 2015? We gotta see when the calendar repeated. Oh, no, it was six check. years but ago, guys, that's Trump's. We gotta guys, check. Guys, isn't Trans Visibility Day every day for Barack? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a Michelle Obama joke, that's not funny. I love Michelle. Not that I love any politician, but you know. <laughs> can I get a mic check? Hold on, can I get, can I, can I get a mic check? Hold on. Can I, get- I won't lie that sometimes I do think like the jokes I hear on flagrant are jokes that like, sh- you say that with your friends, not on a podcast, but also, you know. Oh it's just a reference to the culture. Hey, Christ is king. Hey, Christ is king. That was good. Christ is king. Christ is king. See the way he's like, he's like make. you know what I mean? Bezos says, is it actually anti-Semitic? It, it, it doesn't. I mean, you said I heard that literally constantly growing up. I heard that my whole life growing up too. Crisis King, blah, blah, blah. I think now people are memeing it as a dog whistle and whether or not it is. This goes back to the uh, 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 FT signifier argument with Kidology. Is it a dog whistle if you don't know it's a dog whistle? And when does it become a dog whistle? I mean, ultimately, if people want to make it a dog whistle, it's just a reflection of bubbles and culture. Not everyone's going to hear it this way. Like, I love that they heard this. Like, they are aware of the Trans Visibility Day. I'm LGBT, I'm pro-trans, and I don't even hear about it. I was not paying attention. I don't pay attention to Joe Biden. I don't pay attention to politics anymore. You know, if I do, it's very brief. So it's interesting that they had this experience, and I was just busy focusing on stream and doing events for Discord and making calls and eating ham. That's what I was doing Sunday, you know? So it's kind of interesting, like, depending on your bubble, what you're going to observe. But look how they're talking about something that we all know about, which is... Sometimes life just happens and Trans Visibility Day in Easter will fall on the same day. And it's not some grand conspiracy. But of course, some people in some bubbles have to make it all about them. So it becomes a grand conspiracy that they're trying to replace Easter with Trans Visibility Day. And then, of course, these grifting YouTubers and, you know, conservative talking pundits, whatever, they curate that sort of like conspiracy theory and then continue it forward. I actually, I am... Uh, disappointed I think in humanity slightly that's me holding on to the attachment of sort of like thinking we'd be in a better cycle but you know humans repeat history it is what it is but I am sort of disappointed that I went through I felt like my childhood was so much better when it came to politics which nothing was a conspiracy theory everyone was just corrupt that is so much cleaner and now it's like conspiracy theory and making up weird just weird weird stories that aren't even close to true 
And now everybody gets to jump on a bandwagon of their own conspiracy theory. Like my group is the most targeted. No, my group is the most targeted. My group is the most targeted. And I'm just sitting here like, damn, I kind of liked it back when Nixon, it wasn't a conspiracy theory. It was just corruption. I mean, I wish that we could go back to the days when it was just corruption and not a conspiracy theory. Not that conspiracy theories are something that haven't been around. It's just now they're so everywhere that I'm sitting here, I'm kind of, ex that's why I think I mostly love politics too. It was exhausting. Conspiracy theory after conspiracy theory. And I'm just, is there any like reason or is there any, like, are we actually going to deduce the evidence? You know, so here's Andrew and the boys calling it out and saying, you know, is it a conspiracy or maybe it just fell on the same calendar day. But this is what I mean to say is like, we know better. Some of us. And it doesn't change the way that we also sometimes fall into bad habits of reacting in a way that screams that it's coming from our bubble, but we think it's something more profound, you know? People really feel like, I meet Christians and Catholics all the time. They're like, you know, we're the most targeted group in the world. And I'm like, yeah. They're like, yeah, we're the most targeted. I meet white men all the time. They're like, we're the most targeted group. I'm like, okay. I meet black men. They're like, I'm the most targeted group. I'm like, really? Like, you guys, just everyone's the most targeted group. Is that what we're doing now? Black women, I'm the most targeted group. Queer people, trans people, I'm the most targeted group. It's like, yeah, yeah, we all think we're the most targeted group. And targeted by who, by the way? The relationship you think you're having with your bubble. So some of it is very, very true. And some of it is just not as, like, conspiracy, conspiracy as it needs to be. Sometimes it's just like, yeah, you're in a conflict right now and your group is being the most targeted and then this group will be targeted and then this group will be targeted. But it all didn't start from some, like it didn't start out of nowhere. People have been targeting people since day one. Cain done killed Abel. That's a joke. But you know, the if you believe in the Bible, you think, you know, a brother on brother crime, rampant. So it's kind of interesting the way we can have the conversation, the way we say it out loud, but we can't take it further. Sometimes when I talk to people and they're, they're always just like, they don't understand like they're on the other side of it, that they really did just exchange one bubble for another bubble, which is fine, by the way. Again, I don't think it's wrong to be in a bubble. Sometimes people think I'm saying that I don't live in a bubble. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I'm just aware that I'm in the bubble and this is my bubble. And like, I don't believe like Christians are being the most targeted. I have no reason to believe that. But I also don't believe like, Anyone is more targeted than anyone else, except in the moment of time they're being targeted. So there's always a group that statistically is being the most targeted, but it's a reflection of history, not a reflection of conspiracy. It's just always going to happen because humans are always this way. That was good. That was Crisis King. And whenever I say Crisis King, I need a close up on Duff. Yes. Crisis, Crisis King. King. Crisis King. Michelle Obama's King. <laughs> Stop. 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 We're doing that thing where we become too right wing on the pod. Oh, my bad. My bad. We my become bad. too right wing bad. on the comedy my podcast. <laughs> we're doing that thing. We're, we're doing that thing again. Okay? So, uh, 2021. 2021. Biden, I love both of them. 2021. The Biden proclaimed the 31st of transgender visitors. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to save you. I'm trying to help you. Yo, he's already been saved. Because and you see how they're like commenting on the commentary on the commentary. They're like commenting on the bubble. We're all aware that someone's going to be upset. We're all aware that like certain things can't be said. And we're aware that every generation, everyone feels that way. And everyone does it to each other. Everyone's always trying to silence. Everyone always try. Bro, we're going to talk about Julia and Eileen in the next story. And even on their videos where I mentioned that I think age gap relationships, like this large of an age gap relationship, 40 years is probably an indication that that contributed to the end of the relationship. People are like, no, they said it wasn't that. I know they said it wasn't that. Are you going to trust the two morons who are in this relationship to begin with? Are you going to trust the two like toxic girls who decided to start this relationship in the first place and think it was a good idea? Are you literally looking to the people who literally self-destructed and they're like, they know. Do you really think they know the reason their relationship ended? Or do you think they're maybe in denial a little bit? But see how grown adults think like, oh, I know what's wrong. Do you? Do you? Do you think the 40-year age gap maybe played a fucking role in the fact that Eileen wasn't mature enough to handle her life and the fact that Julia was dumb enough to fall for it? Do you maybe think that? And do you think it's quite interesting that they're using their relationship for now for clicks and views and trying to be, quote, vulnerable on the internet with, an, with a parasocial toxic audience? Do you maybe think that? So you go back to this bubble, same fucking shit.
it's like we're all humans who claim we have the answers and we know what we're doing. And I'm trying to say no one has the universal answer. We only have our perception and our relationship with the answer we think we found. And that's the question you have to ask yourself. Should I settle for the answer I feel like I found or should I dig deeper? Is that actually the answer or is there another kind of answer? And I think in politics, the answer that sounds the most likely to fit your narrative feels the most right, which is why it's ironic that conservatives say facts over feelings when they literally were run with conspiracy theories because it feels right. You know how many conservatives I know talk about the elite and then mention how Tucker Carlson is, is a good person as if he himself is not part of the elite class. It's like they can know that something is wrong, but they don't really have the right answers. But then again, like who does? Right? He is risen! <laughs> Christ is king! Christ is king! I'm, I'm sorry. Man, Say it, Doug! Yeah. We gotta get Akash baptized. You ain't been trying to tell you. Say I'm, what? Stop trying to bathe him. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> we'll do it. <laughs> we really will do Anything it. Anything for him not to bathe. Yo, that is true. Why don't you baptize your damn armpits and self? I got baptized when I was a baby. That was the last time. That was the last time, was huh? It. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> listen, so, all right, say your numbers. <laughs> his fucking spectrum down. His favorite is part of the pod is it? Hey, do research. Research. <laughs> oh my God. I'm doing research, bro. Uh, forehead gets forehead in. I'm going to research it, bro. No, okay, crazy. 20, okay. 2021, Biden said that this was the first national trans visibility day. So basically, it was like an organization that did it. Then he picked it up in 2021 and was like, all right, now we're doing so it. So he national. declared it in 2021. Mm -hmm. Yep, still his before team this, this year. was two fucking stupid to nod to look into if there was going to be Easter on a trans visibility day. Yeah. So then they're in a pickle where they're like, okay, we see it's lining up on Easter. Do we double down and like make the proclamation or do we kind of just forget that we did that? And just kind Can't of you just that? change the date, like change the month? I mean, is there one? See how they have to do that though? Because other grown adults can't handle sharing a day or having a overlap with someone else's bubble or culture in the States. Conservatives will literally rant and rave, and I love them so much, and I have such deep love for my conservative relatives, will rant and rave about freedom and expression, and they don't want the government telling them what to do. And so a group of Americans who are pro-LGBT want a trans visibility day, but when it comes to that sort of freedom, it's like, not, uh, not that kind, though. But the religious one, the one where we believe in, like, an invisible God, that one needs to be celebrated. And I think there's something about that that is just so human and so part of the narrative. So like if you have family members that are in that bubble, if you yourself are in that bubble, that's fine. The question is, how do you not know you're in the bubble? Well, you don't know because you literally think this is all of life. Your perception has like a scanner and you're scanning everything in front of you and you're like, yep, this is all of existence. This is all of anything that's happening in the world. And same with trans people, same with minorities in general. We only ever see what's in our vicinity. It's actually really hard to see outside of it. And not that you have to, by the way. You can have a very successful life never looking outside of your bubble. Like truthfully, right? But at the same time, maybe it would contribute to sort of a better world if we did that. But also, I think ultimately a lot of people have very strong beliefs. Like I learned that Muslims believe like you're never, you were born Muslim. So they call it, Oh, shoot. What do they call it? Revert instead of convert. Right. Like they oh, if you become a Muslim, you're reverting, not converting. And I was like, oh, that's so interesting. Like they've already put a prescription on every single baby that hasn't even been born yet versus Catholics and other people. You sort of convert into that. And I think that's sort of interesting, like this idea of like one day you'll find Christ, like everyone's going to find Christ or one day you'll find Allah, I guess. And like that's really important. I think that's kind of a beautiful when you're in the bubble. What a beautiful idea in your own mind. Like, yes, one day someone's going to be as happy as I am finding my relationship with God. But realistically, it's also sort of very inappropriate, I think, is like the word I want to use. It's just super inappropriate, you know, because it is putting a prescription on 8 billion people and the people who have not even been born yet. And it's sort of insane, but it's also so human. So you're like looking at people and you're like, I see your good intentions, but man, the road to hell is super paved in those, you know? 
one thing trans people would understand, it's changed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's April 1st now. <laughs> <laughs> and then people will be like, oh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, or June, isn't June LG? Also, why do the trans no, people no, no, want to share with... <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, because because you're gay? No. June gay? No, we got February. No, we, we got June T. Oh, oh, I mean, realistically, being trans is like being religious. You're both having like a spiritual relationship with something that's a relationship with yourself. Like God's not tangible. Gender's not tangible. That's why it's so personal. That's why gender and religion should be so personal. Like my gender is personal. It has nothing to do with you. Now, society that is built on gender maybe doesn't have a place for your representation of gender and that's difficult or a society that's not built on your religion, that's really difficult, right? I think religious people who are persecuted in the Middle East, like my family was as Catholics in a Muslim dominated country, that's really painful. Trans people who are persecuted by Christians in their, you know, in America, let's say, that's really painful. But of course, because we both think we're doing good things on behalf of our belief systems, we justify the discrimination because we think it's for the best of the world. And that's what I'm saying. Like, it's amazing how we can have these conversations. We can say it out loud, but then we can't think like, shoot, maybe I'm doing the same thing. Maybe there's a better way. Maybe there's a better way for us to be having this sort of like social dynamic. Or maybe we should just do the thing humans have been always doing, which is like destroying and killing and taking over land. Right? Post around that. So imagine Trans Visibility <laughs> Day was Juneteenth. What would you do? <laughs> it's going to be some murders. <laughs> it's going to be some murders? <laughs> I don't know if Alex means that. Like, I don't know if he literally thinks like black communities would be very upset if trans people shared Juneteenth with them. But I would say that that is why people deserve the world that they have because you can't share. Your inability to share is fundamentally the problem. Right? It's one of the biggest problems of humans, but also not a problem because we're all like little biological animals and this is what we're doing. But an inability to share is sort of the problem. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Oh, all the people are saying bad things about trans visibility. They being on duty. <laughs> that, 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 that word. God damn. Wow. That word. <laughs> that word. Trans visibility day. There we the, go. I got the, it. Every <laughs> nanofiber in Al's tongue was trying to get the word visibility out. <laughs> I mean, we were halfway through the handshake. The word had a yeah, yeah, yeah. no, You, but you, you kept to, pushing though. Yeah, I, had to. I, I had respect to. that. I respect that. Oh my God. Listen, so so. Busta Rhymes. Oh, <laughs> Christ is king. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I like it. We're sorry Shuts about out. that. Whole okay, thing all the time. Listen, so this is all we all we want to ask right now is, if it was that easy for us to look this up, mm -hmm. why do you think there are so many people that are posting about it? What do, what is the reason? Because they could also look it up. These are not dumb people. It's not like just some random, random Twitter yeah. account. They're like, it feels as if they're like news organizations that are propping up this idea. Why mm -hmm. do you think that is, guys? Hmm. I like money. I Wait, what do you mean? I think it was money. I'm do like, you think you, you think that there is money to be made <laughs> off of outrage? <laughs> <laughs> do you think if you outrage a certain community that they will consume your... Look, there is money to be made on outrage. You know, it's definitely a vibe. It's difficult not to rely on it, too, because lots of people do. But then I think it bites you in the butt and I don't recommend it. You know, sometimes I dabble in fun thumbnails and cl like clickbaity titles and I'm OK with that. But ultimately, it is very much about this money thing, but also ideology. I think about the quartering a lot. Jeremy loves smoking weed with him. That was fun. I just think it's really funny when boys smoke weed with me and are nice to me. And then they end up being just like assholes to women on the internet as a career. I just think it's interesting that off the internet, you know, but then on the internet, anyways, it doesn't matter. So I think about him and his whole shtick. And I'm like, you don't really believe this, do you? And if you do like, but it's like, I can't believe how successful Jeremy has gotten over the years in his own way. Like, I'm actually kind of impressed that it's worked, but it really has worked. His outrage, he's an outrage. Like, Jeremy quartering is literally all about the outrage. Piss people off, get them to click. Famous people have even had to interact with him because they're so mad at him. And I'm like, oh my God, it's working. But then he seems like an asshole. Like, he seems like the last person I'd want to talk to. But then I have this, this memory of Jeremy in my mind where I'm like, oh, Jeremy was really nice to me. And I'm like, 
Why would you want that to be your reputation where you're so nice in person, but then you're just the biggest asshat on the internet? And that's sort of interesting, right? But he has he has made himself pretty successful and he's gotten banned from places and he's had some issues. He used to pee in his basement, if you guys don't know. It doesn't matter. The point is, is it is a way to be. But it is kind of an interesting decision. Yeah, I agree. Bezos says Blair White is similar with the outrage clicks. I agree that Blair White also very nice to me when I worked with her, is basically unable to ever remove herself from that specific decision because it is her bread and butter. She, you know, she likes to tell this story that always oh, like one video and then I took off. But the truth is, is like not only did she take off, but she kept it consistent. The audience she has is prepared for the vibe she dishes every time they watch. Jeremy's the same. They know if they watch Blair or Jeremy, they're going to be able to be angry they're going to be able to express themselves and their biases. They're going to be able to shit on trans people while going like, but I like Blair, but trans people suck, but I like Blair. Or they're going to look at Jeremy and say like, yeah, women suck. Like I hated the Marvel movies. It's like, yeah, they they know what to expect. It's the same thing with Rush Limbaugh or any of these people like you watch. And even progressives are the same. When you click into the show, they want the same thing. You guys know that one of the things that I appreciate about my work is that I've always been able to change my audience and change my ideas and maintain a job. I think I'm very lucky in that way. And I think I'm so lucky. Now, obviously, it means that the audience can get confused over time and be like, I don't get what Britney's doing now. So what's she doing now? What's the expectation I can have of Britney? Because they do want an expectation. And it's very human of us. Even I do that. When I have certain streamers that I watch at certain times of the day and they're not on, I'm like, whoa, how am I supposed to do how am I supposed to do my yoga without my sounds? You know, even I am a human that like, I love the ritual. And that's really what we're giving each other is a ritual to perform. The ritual of anger, the ritual of outrage. And it's a good consistency, man. It really works. The question is, do you want it to work forever? And is this something you want to eventually stop doing? Stop engaging with the angry reactions. And the answer for most people will be no which is why I say most people are twos in bubbles. They die in bubbles. They like their bubbles. They actually don't want to challenge the way they think. They actually don't want to question if they know things. That's why I joke that a, a conversation between fives is silence. Like, what do we have to talk about? Even earlier, I saw one of you say that, like, even thinking about government holidays is a big deal is so funny now. But there was a time I was obsessed. With politics, government holidays. Like, I was just drowning in this being the most important thing. And now I'm looking at the world and I'm like, cool. But like, what if it wasn't the most important thing? But it makes sense that it would be the most important thing for these people because like this is where their journey has taken them, right? It's why I, I think I'm like probably less judgmental than most people at this stage in my life just because I, I know why you got there. And yes, of course, as a person, it's frustrating because I know it's also going to lead to so much conflict. But also I get it. Like I get why you got there. It makes sense. You feel really seen here. And a lot of people identify so strongly with the negative feelings they have that when they get those feelings validated, especially from the internet, it just feels so good. And I can't even blame them for it. But also it's like ironic that they're the ones asking for like tolerance and peace, but they can't give it to other people, which is why it's disappointed when I see progressives do the same thing. It's like everyone wants tolerance and peace, but we can't give it to each other. So what's the solution? Obviously, I would argue the solution is introspection, extrospection, and to move away from the bubble and find a different bubble or form your own, you know. But I think that there's something about this that I will always find sort of like such a good example of bubbles, right? Just like, look at them go. And it's not about being better than them. It's just saying, is this better for you? My work isn't about talking down to people, you know, unless we're being condescending and fun. It's about saying, is this good for me? Is this what I need? Not about like, well, fuck them. It's about, I hope you find joy in your bubble. If it's religious, great. But is this good for me? Me, you know? Content, way more? Yeah. yeah. Wait, is that what these people are up Seems to? Seems to be how it goes. Get yeah. the mm. fuck out of here. Seems to be. Yeah, we gotta do that. Yeah, we need to outrage more, yeah? How do we outrage them? I don't know. <laughs> well, who should we outrage? Uh, everyone. Black people? <laughs> no. Yeah. But they that's don't... a really good thing to do. No, I've seen a lot of people make careers off of they that. They don't crisis, have the dude. money. 
outraging a certain group of people, right? I wish I wanted to for that because that was crazy. Thank you. That was crazy. Without the laugh, it really just sounded like hate. No, the the gays, you know, lots of people have money, but the gays got a lot of money, you know? But there's not enough money in it. Like, there is enough money in certain bubbles, though, to build the outrage around. But is the money really worth it? Yeah, yeah, really? Yeah. So just dying. No, no, but you're right. They broke. So we got to find out. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because what was that little blonde chick that did it? She pissed off black people. And Talk, she... Tommy Lar Laren. Tommy Laren. Her. Say again? What happened to her? Where's she at? I mean, that's what Ben Shapiro used to do at the beginning yeah. of his career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where's Tommy yeah. Lair and Candace? I swear to God, if I just did it a year, if I grifted for like a year, I'd make so much money. But then we're like, what's the point of making all that money? I already make enough money. Like I make good money. But like, why would I need, like, why would you, what is, what are you really worshiping? But then again, some of them really believe it. Especially like regular old conservatives or regular old like people. I always wonder about Tommy Lauren. Like, does she actually believe this shit? Because remember when Tommy... Remember when Tommy was pissing off black people, but then Tommy went and pissed off men, white men, because she said that she was sick of dating men who couldn't compete with her. And she felt like these men weren't good enough and these men were bums. Do you remember that? Do you remember her pissing off white men? That was pretty funny. That was pretty funny. Baltia said, what would be your grift? It's always the question because any grift you do for me would be almost unethical, right? Because if I grifted as a conservative, then I'm spreading like propaganda I don't believe in. And would be, I think, more harmful th for the world. I think if you're not conservative, conservative beliefs are harmful to you. I think if you're not progressive, progressive beliefs are going to harm you. See, that's the difference between the bubbles and sort of my belief. I think if you're a vegan, you're probably going to impact meat eaters in a more negative way. If you're a meat eater, you're probably going to impact vegans in a negative way. Like ultimately, unless you're a part of the group, you're probably going to impact the other group in a much more negative way. And I think people think like, no, if you're like me, you'll be happy. Yes, if they're like you, they'll be happy. But what if they're not like you? Just like in my world where my parents created this great bubble, they built this great business, had these great kids, had this great life. And they were like, don't you like the life we gave you? And it's like, nope. Yes, but no. Yes, but no. I got to do something else because if I stay in this bubble, I have to believe in God. I have to be anti-LGBT. I have to follow. You know, I don't want to do this. My husband and I are married and we can't even stay at my family's home because we're not married in the Catholic church. No, I don't want to live in that bubble. I don't mind the bubble. I'm not saying you should get rid of the bubble. I'm saying I think it's insane that you think I would be happy in a bubble where you won't even recognize my marriage. I can't even sleep over my mom's house, my mom and dad's house with my husband because we're not Catholic. We didn't get Catholic married. That's fine. But no, I don't want to live in that bubble. And they're looking at you like, whoa, you're crazy. How do you not want to live in this bubble? And I'm looking at them like, why do you think I would want to live in this bubble? You see the difference there? I'm not saying you, why do you want to live in the bubble? I know why you want to live there. I'm saying, why do you think I want to live there? Because they hope that everyone ends up like them, which is very human. Most people I meet literally want you to end up like them so they can get the validation, right? That they've, they picked the right answer or solution or whatever my brother mark in the chat says farm bro and i are watching pop those bubbles boys pop those bubbles just kidding i love you say hi to the kids for me it's an interesting yeah it's an interesting pivot to watch ben shapiro and candace it's funny because they're feuding but it seems like the same thing you start really kind of right leaning Bro. and then you get a little bit more toward the center go mainstream all of a sudden well let's just forget all the other stuff i yeah. said it's, oh you guys misunderstood yeah. what i said yeah. i wasn't just feeding an agenda to make money off of dumb people no 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 there's you a, guys misunderstood yeah, there's a great uh interview where where ben is justifying why he fired candace yeah and uh the one with the Ooh, you know how Ben fired Candace? Because it's like, it, it's controversial for maybe the right reason, wrong reason. But do you think that he should be able to feel safe with his staff staff in his own company? Is Candace, first of all, I don't trust Candace Owens. I think she's grifting hard. She's the woman who says like, oh, my dream is to be a stay-at-home mother. If only I could do it. Her husband's worth like $50 million plus. She's worth like $20 million. You could be a stay-at-home mom. This narrative she sells where she's like, that would be the dream. If I could just be a stay-at-home mom. What's stopping you, girl? What's stopping you? And that to me is a grift. If you're going to preach something, you're going to say, this is my dream. You're going to sell it to other people, but you're not going to do it yourself. I don't trust you. I don't trust people that don't walk the walk, right? So Candace Owens to me is a grifter. 
But does Ben Shapiro have the right to feel safe within his own company, like his own sphere? And I think that's a very interesting thing to talk about because in some ways, like, should she be able to get fired for having a difference of opinion? Should he be able to feel safe as a Jewish person while she's spouting pretty anti-Jewish things? You know, it's an interesting question. Uh, Ruben? Uh, yes, the yeah. month Ruben is great. We should even pick it up and watch it. But what's f funny is, is that, uh, and I don't know the extent to which Ben is criticized. I know he's very critical of media and media being biased. Yeah. Mm. But before you have a media platform, it's very easy to critique media. It's mm. very easy to go, look at New York Times, look what you do, and look at Washington Post, look what you do, and you're censoring free sh speech, you're for censorship. In this conversation, he makes the argument for censorship. He calls it something else. Yeah, I forget the term I have in my phone. But he, I don't even think he's using the term right. But he's basically like, there's a window of ideas we accept. Yes. And we accept ideas between this. Don't I always say that if Brett Cooper, who claims they're all about free speech and all of this stuff, and I love it, we all say it, all the progressives say it, the Republicans say it, we all like to pretend like we're super tolerant and we allow free speech, but come on, we all have limitations. And for some people, they just don't want to hear it, bro. And so if Brett Cooper changes her political ideals and becomes more progressive, you know she won't be able, like Ben Shapiro can't keep her on payroll. This is what I'm trying to say. When I was doing conservative radio and I did that one, that one opportunity I had to do conservative radio, the one time they told me, you have to create an image and stick to the image. Tim Dillon just talked about this in the diary of the CEO today, so good, where he's like, they take a person, they give you a script and you stick to the script, right? And I think that's fine when you're selling to the masses that, and I say fine, meaning like it makes sense. Not that it's like, not that I'm putting a stamp of approval on it, but like it makes sense why you would do that, right? Because that's what the people want. And if you're in the industry of making money, that makes sense. That's what they want. They want to be told things that make sense to them. So if Brett Cooper started getting on her show and was like, I actually think I'm pro trans rights. Everyone would be like, oh, Brett, you've changed who are you? I don't even recognize you anymore. You've changed. Daily Wire is a right-leaning, more conservative organization. And they expect it to be that way. That's how they build their base. Same if you had a progressive kind of organization. They probably wouldn't have, and they don't have, right-winged people in their organization because it ruins the vibes, right? So we can't be that surprised, but also doesn't that say so much about our bubbles and our lives and how we socialize and how we think the world is like us? Like I was listening to Aiden Ross. Aiden Ross says, no one I know isn't voting for Trump. Everybody I know is voting for Trump. Yeah, because like everybody you know is probably more right-winged or conservative. But if he thinks he is literally, no, he knows everybody, like, he can't fathom that anyone's voting for Biden. And by the way, this was my problem in 2016. In 2016, I was in progressive Seattle. Everybody I knew was voting for Hillary. No one was voting for Trump. And when Trump won, I was like, what just happened? I didn't think almost anyone was going to vote for Trump. And it was like the weirdest experience where I was like, oh, my gosh. And this is when I was like a two. I was in this bubble. And I really thought, like, everything I was experiencing was, quote, the world. And then I remembered, oh yeah, I'm like in this bubble and I'm forgetting there's a whole other part of this country that is having a completely different relationship with their finances, their struggles, their family values. They need things that progressives aren't talking about or conservatives, you know, they're talking about things that progressives are talking about they need, but they can't help them. We can't help each other because we want such different things. It's hard to help people who want very different things from you. Because one, it doesn't feel fulfilling to you. You go to work every day helping people you don't even agree with accomplish their goals. It feels bad. So we all want to go to work pushing ideas that feel good to us so we feel like we accomplish something. Even I do that. I come to work every day and I push a narrative out into the world that makes me feel good about myself because it's what I believe. And then I end my day saying, I think I did a really good job today. I think I helped some people. And what I'm really saying is I hoped you know, I hope to help some people gain some tools to kind of do what they want in life in a good way. But it's ultimately because I think I have a sort of a good idea, not for the world, but for people in the world, which is different. I don't think I have good ideas for the world. I think I have good ideas for people in the world. Do we know the difference? 
I'm not saying I can make a prescription for 8 billion people. I'm saying I think my, my version of looking or my version of understanding the world is probably going to be helpful to like at least a million people. And I would like to get those million their attention. And everybody else, you go figure out your God, your religion, whatever you need to get your tools. You know? Uh, this, I guess this is, if I get window, you're looking like this. So we accept ideas between here and here. And anything outside of that window, well, you're fireable. That's censorship. What? But yeah. he's acting as... It's normal, though. It is. It's a version of censorship, but it's also literally everything. That's what I'm saying. When I was offered that talk radio opportunity... They told me, like, I'd have to f figure out the shtick and keep the shtick and never, ever publicly say different. It's very normal. We don't like it. It's weird. But we are not in entertainment in that way. Even YouTubers do that. There are YouTubers that don't tell you they have whole families, don't tell you anything about their personal life. There are literally YouTubers in the industry that are, like, trying to be big and famous. They don't talk about anything real from their actual life because it wouldn't be good for the brand. And this is just the reality of like how certain industries work. Again, Ben Shapiro would never hire someone like me. Why would he want me to work for his company when the audience wants to listen to somebody conservative? It makes no sense. And then everyone else is doing the same. Progressive companies are absolutely doing the same thing. Is that this is like a justified reason for firing people when you built your identity and platform off of no censorship and free No censorship, free speech are all buzzwords people use and no one means. No one actually could be completely free speech. No one could ever actually be completely pro-freedom. No one human being on the planet, and maybe one, there's a billion of them after all. But in general, these things are just things we tell ourselves. They're not real. Like progressives, conservatives, it doesn't matter who you are. You all have your limitations. It's not a real narrative. It's one we tell ourselves to feel good about ourselves. Oh, I'm super tolerant. I'm super open. I welcome all different kinds of variations of beliefs and people and religions. We all have our limitations. Me, you, them, God, everybody has a limitation. Even God, even God has a line. Even God says, oh, everybody's welcome except these people. freedom of yes, speech and yeah. facts don't care about your feelings and all this shit. It's also funny that that window happens to end where his beliefs end. I am Isn't that interesting? That you would say well, that. not being pro-Israel, that's where the window ends. What? That's also your specific personal belief. What? So, I just so don't you see. you can't have an opinion on your platform that is not pro a country that is not ours? Hmm. Yeah. Wait a minute. It's crazy. I wish so that, is I the Daily Wire an American media platform or is it an Israeli oh, media oh, platform? Blah, 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 I'm just asking. Blah, blah, blah. This guy's cooking. This guy's I'm just asking. Asking. Well, you know, honestly, though, America's interest is in Israel. So I think they, in general, you know what I'm saying? Get that, get that, get. I'm just, no, if, if the rule Duh. is... I'm just saying, if the cooking. rule is you cannot be critical, because he has no problem being very critical of America. Yep. Sure. Critical of the left in America. Left sure. is half the country. That's you have cash. no problem eviscerating half That's of the, the country. That's the current power in, party in power. But you can't criticize Israel as a country. That's just another country. Unless you're saying, and you're clearly admitting that the Daily Wire is an arm of the Israeli, I guess, media or propaganda machine. For, wait, is that? Oof. Are you manipulating the, the religious right in America? Are you manipulating? They want to be manipulated. People want, that's why the world is a reflection of us as a whole. Like the world is a reflection of us as a whole. The world wants to be told what they want to be told. It's why we end up going into certain avenues or bubbles. It's why we want the reinforcement and the validation. And I'm trying to say like, instead of thinking it's bad, I would argue that it, it, it just is. That's just how humans are. We literally like our tribes. We like our communities. We like feeling safe. Which means like that's, it just makes sense. Now the question is, if you as the individual don't like it, what do you do about it? Because groups like it too much. You can't take it away from the group, right? Like you cannot ask the group not to be a group. Guys, the moment you're in a group, there is a collectivism, a part of that group. You sound the same, look the same, believe the same, regurgitate the same, raise your kids the same. Like you, you just, you know, there's an expectation of behavior that says, hey, you have to be predictable in some way, which makes sense. You got to walk the walk. If you say you're this thing, you better be this thing, right? So 
we're never, I don't think it's appropriate to ask groups to change. The question is, if the individuals within the groups want to change, how does that happen? Right? Ooh, Thunderstorm, great point. Says being recruited makes you feel wanted. Absolutely. It's why Scientology is so popular. Oh my gosh. They make you feel wanted. It's why people love, I mean, gosh, you, it feels so great to be loved by a community until you have one thought that deviates and until you start questioning and still until, 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 right? I have so much love for my family and I'm glad so many of them are so happy in that world, but obviously it wasn't good for me. Obviously I left it. Obviously I'm much happier now. It's not to say that their bubble is bad. It's to say it wasn't good for me. And I remember being a person that was like a militant atheist and maybe I was like a grumpy feminist and I was like, everyone should be like me. That's also my bubble thought, you know? Everyone should be like me. No one should be like me. You should be like you. And you should do your thing, you know? Ingrid says Scientology is not popular. Um, Do you follow the LA guy who is in front of the Scientology building? Because that TikTok's wild and people love Scientology there. They just love getting pulled into the building. They fucking love it. So, okay, like, I know Scientology isn't, like, you know, Islam popular, but, okay, and even Islam, oh, my God, like, I love some of the Muslim TikToks I see. Like, they're beautiful, and they're praying, and it's really lovely, and you almost want to wear hijab and join, but then you remember, like, oh, shit, like, it's not just cool clothes, good music, and, like, fucking bomb food. It's a lot of sacrifice, and it's a lot of, like, anti-LGBT, and it's a lot of, like, anti-nudity, and it's a lot of anti-alcohol and anti-pork, and, like, mm. You know, it looks cool, though. It's a vibe. Like, it looks cool. Mm. Are you really going to vibe there, you know? And so, again, maybe, maybe you're, maybe you see the Vatican, and you're like, oh, my gosh, like, Catholicism is it. Or maybe, you know, whatever it is for you. Whatever it is for you, there's going to be a reason you're attracted to it. And the question is, why? Why is this the direction you went into? For a lot of people, they just want a community to belong to. For a lot of people, they feel genuinely seen and understood in this bubble. And for other people, why not? I'm bored. Sure, this works. A lot of people settle into their beliefs, like they settle into their romantic relationships. Instead of actually sharing values with your partner, you figure, hey, at least I'm not alone. Instead of actually sharing the values of the church, at least I have a community, right? You know? So I wanted to show you guys this clip. That's basically all I wanted to show you was this interesting discussion that happens. We know it happens. We have the conversations out loud. But it's weird how we can't decide, like, who can we really trust? And I'm not saying you should be cynical or a conspiracy theorist. That's not a good, that's not good. Just know like people are people and people are going to do things and you are people and so you are going to do things. And that's why I recommend either creating a bubble or finding a bubble that is truly a vibe with your values, right? Because sometimes it's going to be better for you. Now, you guys know I'm not a community person. I thought I was. I tried my hardest to find a community and then I realized like my community is my husband and my cat and I'm good with that. And then of course my inner circle, my family and close friends that I love so much, but like I don't want to do life with them. I'm going to do life with myself and my husband. And that's that's what I mean by community. Lots of communities do life with each other. They sort of like grow more and more and more into a belief system or a sort of, you know, where are we going on vacation next year? And like, what are we doing? How are we raising our kids? And I think that's great. What a vibe. I just realized it's not really a vibe for me. I got to be able to pick up and go and do things. You know, but I did dream. Oh my gosh, my siblings and I used to talk about this all the time, buying like a cul-de-sac and living in the same neighborhood or farm brother and I have talked like, you know, what if I move near him or, we, you know, we've we've definitely all lived with each other. We grew up with each other. Even as adults, some of us were roommates. It's something I miss constantly. But also, ultimately, I think we're all too independent to sort of like be with each other as a community. I think a lot of us needed to find different communities or different ways of existing to sort of flourish the best because you really only have one life and then that's it. So again, interesting how we can talk about the bubbles. Interesting how we know outrage media is a thing. Interesting, interesting, interesting. And yet we never think to ourselves, am I participating in this? The world is a reflection of us as a whole and we are all participants.
even me, even you, you know? Dun, 